Hello, hello, hello. What if you could build enterprise-grade machine learning forecasting models without actually being data scientists? Today, I will show you how to do cash flow forecasting using Profit in Microsoft Fabric and why it beats traditional Excel forecasts. Let's dive right in. What you see on screen here is the PySpark notebook I created in Microsoft Fabric. You will start first with imports and installation. The first thing that you will need to do is to install Profit because it's not part of standard package in Microsoft Fabric. But what is Profit actually? It's an open source machine learning based framework for forecasting built by Meta. So you start with installation and then there are a few imports that we'll need down the road. So. First, we import pandas, numpy, which we'll be using to generate accounts receivable dummy data. In your case, obviously, you will likely be working with production data. In my case, I will be generating the data. Then we're importing profit, matplotlib for visualizations, some daytime imports for data handling, and also to keep it clean, I will ignore warnings in the outputs. In the next one, and you can skip it if you're working with production data, but here is how I'm generating AR data, accounts receivable data that I will be working with and forecasting. Data that I'm generating spans five, five years, from 2020 until end of 2024. That's what I will be using to train the model. Here, I'm generating it on a daily level. However, you will see that later I will ag aggregate it to monthly level. For strategic view, you usually work with monthly. Now, I wanted my data to be more or less close to real life. In real life, when businesses work, they usually have some seasonality. When it comes to accounts receivable, there is some seasonality related to quarters because collections increase at the end of the quarter. Besides that, collections usually increase at the end of calendar year. Everyone wants their bonuses, everyone wants to close their books, and therefore usually collections spike at the end of the year. So all of that I wanted to put into the data. However, I'm getting ahead of myself. So the base amount for daily collections will be $50,000. Then for certain months, as I mentioned, uh, there will be quarter end spikes. So those months will, be, will have 20% increase. Besides that, weekends usually see lower collections because during that time, people do not process payments. There could be some automatic processing, but not manual, and therefore collections usually lower. And we're assuming that business is growing year over year. Therefore, every year, numbers will see 5% increase. Again, your real data could be different. All of these factors combined, plus some noise to keep it randomized, and this results in my data set of collections. Now, because I wanted to base my, my example of strategic view, monthly one, at the end, I'm aggregating to monthly level and making sure that dates are set as months end. This is important to keep it consistent across your whole notebook. There are many places where we'll be working with dates here. Therefore, make sure you are consistent with this. However, Profit supports different granularities. It can work with daily data. It can work with weekly data. It can work with monthly or quarterly data. You don't have to stick to monthly data like I do here. Here you can actually see sample of the data that was generated we see fluctuations from month to month from 1.2 million to 1.7 million. As a next step, I would like to write that data back to Lakehouse, which I will be reading data from. 
Again, I didn't have to do that, but I tried to keep it closer to real example. In real example, you will be reading data from lake house or very house or SQL database and forecasting data and likely writing back and make sure I assume that you have lake house already added here through existing data sources okay so in there I have table called AR collections monthly let me show you how it looks it's a simple two column table, date and collections number. That's all we need for profit to forecast future collections. That's it. Again, you can go more granular and you will likely want to go more granular with your real production data. However, here I'm keeping it simple. Let's move back. To the notebook and as the next step we're reading the data from the lake house this is my data frame with AR data as you can see here I'm reading from my lake house again make sure that it's connected in data items here so you can read from it and I'm converting it to pandas data frame and then we need to prepare data for profit now there are some specifics here. It expects two columns, exactly two. One should be called DS, this one will be for dates, and another is called Y. This one is your measure. In my case, it's collections. Let's prepare data that we ingested from Lake House for profit. Now, my Lake House stores dates with time zone. However, uh, profit expects date without time zone so I need to convert them so here what I'm doing is I'm stripping time zones and transforming it into daytime down to nan nanoseconds what profit would like to have as a result of all of this you will have data frame still with two columns ds and y and as the last step i'm removing all of the null values because you cannot predict them okay so this is how our data frame looks like prepared for profit dates and numbers and here is the juicy part or the main part where you actually initialize the model and fit the model. I removed all of my customizations and let's run default model, meaning Profit will try to look at your data and figure out itself the best parameters uh, to run forecast. So let's do that and let's see how it does. Okay. Create future predictions and then we'll visualize prediction. Okay, you can see here automatic forecast, and actually it didn't do that bad. What you see here, dots are the actuals. So obviously, actuals run until 2025, then it's pure forecast. Line itself is forecasted numbers back in time and then you see uncertainty bands for positive and negative scenarios okay for the most part again it did quite well by default however you can see that in some cases forecasts or actuals were even higher than uncertainty bands so i think we can do better so let me add back custom parameters that I had there and let's rerun the model to see where, whether it does better. Let me run it again.
and let's visualize. And if you look at it closely, now it is much closer and all of the actuals fall within uncertainty bands. Let me walk you through the customization. So there are a few parameters. Most of them you likely won't need to touch. The two most important ones that you will want to play with, and I urge you to actually not leave it on default, but try different variations and see which one fits your data better. Is change point prior scale. It affects how quick model reacts to changes in trends. For example, if there are some spikes, how quickly it will start changing the forecast. So in case you have a lot of spikes in your AR data, likely you need to up the value of charge point prior scale. Otherwise, the lower the value, the more smoother it is. So the less reactive it is to changes. And how you react if you want it to be to most recent events. So change point range. By default, it's set to 80%, which means it only takes first 80% of the available data. If you want more recent events to be taken into account, you have to expand this range. In my case, I've expanded it to 95, meaning 95% of the available data will be taken into account. Instead of first four years out of five available, it will take almost all of the five years of data. These two parameters will be the most impactful. However, there are many more things that you can do. You can add holidays if you want to do so. You can also add special events. For example, if you release new product, likely there could be a spike in AR. If you have a list of those events, you can feed them to the model to make your forecast more precise. Again, more advanced. But you can add those regressors into the model. You can pause here and read through descriptions of different parameters and how they affect the forecast. This is quite useful when you will be tuning the model. However, I already mentioned two most impactful ones. Now, in my case, I'm working with monthly data. Therefore, that could, there could be yearly seasonality. Weekly or daily won't apply here. Not enough granularity. So my yearly seasonality is set to true. And you can actually see it in the data. Right, there are those spikes at the end and beginning of the year, each year. So, clear seasonality. As I mentioned, December's, everyone wants their bonuses. Once you finish tuning the model, you do the fitting. Just one line of code. Depending on your data set, it can either take a few seconds or up to a minute. Still much quicker than doing it and in Excel manually. As the next step, you'll want to create future predictions. I'm creating future data frame. I would like to forecast next 12 months and you ask model to predict the future. That's how easy it is. As the result, you will get a few columns in the data which is predicted by profit. You will get dates, You'll get your collections, so predicted collections. You'll get lower bound or band, and you'll get upper bound or upper band of the forecast. So positive and negative scenarios. So you get all three, and therefore, in your strategic planning, you can account for all three scenarios. This is how the data that you're getting will look like. You already saw this chart. Which, which maps forecast against actuals. And yes, it's quite close. Close enough, I would say. You can also see trend here, and you can see seasonality during the year. As a final step, I'm saving this data in, into Lakehouse, into separate table, 
which I can later ingest into Power BI and do some extra visualizations. I'm taking data frame with all of the columns, making a copy just to make sure I'm not editing the original data. That's just good practice to do. Renaming the columns, forecast date, predicted collections, lower bound, upper bound, adding when, it, when was the last run of the forecast and you can specify the model in case you do multiple forecasts using different techniques. You create Spark data frame and you are writing back to Lakehouse to AR forecast table. Let me switch to Lakehouse and show you the data. This is the table that you will get written back to your Lakehouse, which you can, as I mentioned, ingest into Power BI for further visualizations. This concludes this easy machine learning based forecasting for cash flow. Now, I'm sure you will agree with me, it's much faster and much easier than forecasting in Excel. However, remember all of those parameters which I was setting and changing to tune the model to my data. You don't actually have to do it manually. You can backtest and cross-validate model automatically. You can set up it in a way where from run to run it will be changing the par different parameters and then at the end we'll produce report which parameters are better fitted for your data and produce better forecast. Here I'm doing very minimal example, just 36 iterations. From iteration to iteration I'm changing those four parameters. You can expand it and likely you will want to expand it to get as close as possible. And at the end, I get detailed report, which parameters are the best. If I look here, the best model produced just 3% error compared to actuals, which is really good. Everything below 5% is really good. That's your target. Now, the next one shows error in absolute value. So in this case, it means that on average, our forecast was off by just $50,000. Quite good when you speak of millions. And the last parameter here is 62K. This one shows that some variations or some errors were higher than that, going up to 62K. Again, you can take that into account while doing the planning. However, I would say below 5% is very good, considering how much time we spent on it. That's all for today. Let me know if you, if you would like me to expand on these topics and dive deeper into some of those techniques. And I'll be happy to make another video. Subscribe and see you in the next one.